to continue the debate, I call upon Peter Stevenson to speak against the motion. And Bika, you said at the beginning you were a bit surprised that I'm on this side of the debate. Yes, I think I am too. <laughs> but the organisers insisted I speak on this side of the debate. Um, I also, the, the, an interesting thread's kind of emerged really throughout. Yes, I think underneath all this, this is about factory farming of animals as opposed to farming animals in extensive regenerative systems. Uh, and that's something that I think I accept. Anyway, let's see where we get to. So, I believe that in the UK and globally, there needs to be a substantial reduction in meat production. But in certain circumstances, animals can play a constructive role in farming. And I believe that eating meat in very modest amounts can be a proper part of the human diet. And I fully accept that when somebody needs to eat lots of meat for the sake of her health, then of course she must be able to do so. There are many reasons for moving, you know, for reducing meat consumption. Today's animal farming here and across the world is often inhumane. Uh, many animals are confined in tiny cages or kept in stalls so narrow they cannot even turn round. Others are packed into barren, crowded sheds. Some of the worst animal welfare problems stem from the use of genetic selection to drive animals to faster growth and ever higher yields. And this really causes harm. It pushes them beyond their physiological limits and often leads to great suffering. I mean, for example, today's chickens have been bred to grow so quickly that their legs and heart can't properly support the rapidly growing body. And so each year, millions are suffering from painful leg disorders while others succumb to heart disease before even reaching their slaughter age of five weeks. People like to trust in the term humane slaughter, believing that animals are gently put down. But this is just a story we tell ourselves to keep the cruel reality at bay. In reality, Animals are pushed so quickly at breakneck speed through abattoirs that many suffer from pain, fear, even terror during the slaughter process. <coughs> when animals are kept in stressful, crowded conditions, this undermines their immune systems, making them susceptible to diseases some of which can be transmitted to people. So the, the, the last pandemic before COVID originated in farm animals. That was the 2009 swine flu pandemic. It started in Mexico, just five miles from a major concentration of industrial pig farms. Industrial livestock production is dependent on the routine use of antibiotics to prevent the diseases which are inevitable when animals are kept in poor conditions. This excessive use of antibiotics uh, leads to the emergence of antibiotic resistance, which can then be transferred to people, so undermining some of the key medicines needed to treat serious human disease. Um, industrial livestock production uses huge amounts of soy as animal feed. It's one of the key drivers of deforestation. It also uses, and this is much less well known than the soy issue, huge amounts of cereals, you know, wheat, barley, oats, maize to feed animals. 
Globally, 40 to 45 percent of all cereals are used to feed animals, who then convert them very inefficiently into meat and milk. The calculation is that if the cereals fed to animals were instead used for direct human consumption, uh, we could feed an extra 3.5 billion people every year. The inefficiency of feeding cereals to animals is, is staggering. And industrial livestock's huge need for, for cereals has fueled the intensification of crop production. And this, with its monocultures and agrochemicals, leads to soil degradation, overuse and pollution of water, and biodiversity loss. And livestock produce 14.5% of global greenhouse gas emissions. But despite all this, there are some circumstances. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Despite all this, there are some circumstances in which animals can play a constructive part in farming. Here we come back again to this distinction between factory farming and extensive. Does that mean six minutes? <laughs> um, right, firstly, there are some very arid parts of the world in which it's not really possible to grow crops, but animals such as goats, sheep, llamas, are able to graze on the very sparse vegetation that is available and so, so can produce meat and milk. And so in these kind of regions, uh, livestock are, are crucial to the livelihoods of pastoralists, including nomadic herders. If you then look in areas with ample rainfall, the, the grazing of cattle and sheep on well-managed pasture can lead to the storing of carbon in the soils beneath the pasture and can actually enhance biodiversity because really good pasture provides a very diverse environment. It's rich in plants and invertebrates and beneficial for a variety of birds. And then you get some farmers who actually operate rotational, integrated crop livestock systems. So a typical rotation might be year one wheat, year two barley, year three oats, years four to seven grazing animals. And during that grazing phase of the rotation, soil fertility is being built by the use of animal manure, by the ability of the roots of grasses to collect minerals from deep in the soil, and by the inclusion in the pasture of herbs, wildflowers, and legumes such as clover. And because soil fertility has been built during that uh, grazing phase, the arable stage of the rotation, of the rotation can be conducted without the use of artificial fertilizers. And so this is just one example of how livestock can contribute to genuinely sustainable regenerative agriculture. In conclusion, I think there needs to be a huge reduction in global meat consumption. But I don't think we need move away from meat altogether. That said, I think that Somewhere between the middle of this century and the end of this century, we're going to see meat, as we, as we currently know it, simply just fade away. I think it's going to be replaced by you know, plant-based meat analogues. It's going to be replaced by cultured meat. In other words, the, the growing of meat in laboratories from just a few cells of an animal. And most excitingly, perhaps, it's going to be replaced by what's called precision fermentation. Uh, you see that already in corn, but it's really now expanding. A, a lot of this is coming, will come onto the market in the next few years. It's simply using molecules to produce the nutrients 
previously provided by animals while bypassing the use of animals at all. Thank you. <laughs>